the instructions are ridiculously complicated and there's not many of them. It assumes that you know a lot. So that's going to be fun! Hello, people of the internet, and welcome to a new sewing video! I've started now and I can't stop. I can't. I want to make all the stuff! For some of you, this video won't come as a surprise because you saw me buy this pattern. I'm going to show you what I'm going to be making. First, we've got the pattern. As in my last video, it's also from Reconstruction History. It's pattern number 1339 and it includes some 1930s sporty clothes. The outfit I'm the most interested in is the play set in the middle with the detachable skirt. However, I've been thinking a lot about this in the last few days and I've realized that I always tend to wear separates more than I wear play suits or anything that's attached, unless it's a dress. So I haven't decided yet, but I think what I might do is this play suit style, but make it separate. So do the top on one side and the shorts on one side. I hope I can manage to figure this out somehow. I also want to make the separate skirt, however that might be a separate video. Another thing I wanted to mention, you're going to see that in a bit, but the fabric I chose for this project is kind of sheer, so even though the instructions don't include a lining, only a facing, I think I'm going to fully line both pieces. I'm also going to be making a mock-up because I'm pretty sure something it's not going to fit. We make mock-up in cheaper, plain fabric and then we use set mock-up as lining for the final garment. That's my plan. Materials for this. Do you remember my bag of fabric? This is the fabric I've chosen. It's a pure cotton fabric with a strawberry pattern, as you can see. You can see the next strawberry through it, so it's very, very sheer. Which is why I'm going to line everything. And the fabric for the lining is this plain cotton, which is the same one that I used for my pirate shirt. I will link that video in there so you can go and check it out if you want. These are the buttons that I plan on using. White, silk thread, Nothing fancy. If you're interested, I will include links down below to all the materials I will be using in this project. Basically, everything I can link, I will link. Also, the instructions are ridiculously complicated and there's not many of them. It assumes that you know a lot. So that's going to be fun! I'm scared. Wish me luck. I'm going to need it. And uh, let's get started. First up, I'm pinning the pattern and cutting the fabric. Next, I'm marking points to transfer the dots, notches and center front line to the fabric, which is what I'm doing here. Now I'm basting the center front line so that it's visible on both sides. and marking 3 eighths of an inch of seam allowance at the side and shoulder seams. Here I'm temporarily sewing the darts on side and shoulder seams with a running stitch so that I can test the mock-up. Okay friends, so this is my first attempt at this. Surprisingly, it works pretty well. I hope you can see what I'm doing. This is supposed to be center front 
and that as well so technically it should be more like so but it's a bit too roomy for me so I think I might just cross it a bit more and if I do that then we've got a pretty decent fit actually hopefully you can see more or less I think for the top bit I don't have to make any alterations at all which is amazing now I wish that I had properly sewn it so I wouldn't have to work extra so I'm going to take this apart well done pattern for not being wrong as you can see I have drawn the rest of the seam allowances and I'm now going to sew the final seams with the back stitch like I've started doing here you'll see all of this with more detail in the strawberry fabric now let's repeat everything I just did with an extra serving of strawberries yes I did realize I had placed the pattern in the wrong direction everything is fine I fixed it on time see me sewing the darts with a back stitch. I decided not to baste them but was very careful to go precisely through the pencil lines on both sides. I'm pressing the darts towards the opposite direction I chose for the lining to reduce bulk. Next I'm sewing the side seams between the three body pieces using the same method as for the darts. Now I'm cutting the seam allowance to half the length and pressing it open. The crucial moment is here! We must attach the strawberry fabric to the lining. First, I'm pinning the two fabrics together, making sure to go through both seam allowance lines drawn in either fabric. Next, I'm basting them together all around except for the bottom where the waistband will go. Hello again! I'm on my way to the park and I'm going to bring my sew in, but I figured I would show you where I'm at before I go. Here it is. I've basically basted the strawberry fabric to the lining fabric. What I'm going to be doing now is sew along those seam allowances that you saw me drawing a little bit earlier all except for the ones at the top of the straps which I'm going to be sewing after I turn the garment right sides out hopefully when you see me doing it, it will make sense I'm sewing the outer strawberry extravaganza to the lining using a backstitch As before, I'm cutting half of the seam allowance everywhere I've just sewn. I'm also trimming the outside corners and clipping the inner corners and curves. And this is when the magic happens. I'm turning the garment right sides out and carefully pressing it in the right position. Moving on to the straps. First, I'm pinning the lining out of the way. Then, I'm sewing the straps with a back stitch right sides facing each other and 
as usual making sure to go through both pencil lines. This was kind of hard to do and even more difficult to film, so I apologize if the video could be clearer. Also, I'm sure there is an easier way of doing this, but uh, this is what I've done. Once that seam is done, I'm trimming both ends of the strawberry fabric and one end of the lining to half the length. Next, I'm finger pressing the seam I just finished open and hiding the edges underneath the lining. I'm also hiding the short edge of the lining underneath the long edge. It should look like this. I'm properly pressing this now and folding the remaining lining edge inwards to finish the strap. I'm pressing that into position as well so that it's easier to finish. Finally, I'm sewing the lining using a web stitch. Next, I've drawn a rectangle of the right size for the waistband. I won't bore you with the math, but it's basically calculated so that the final result has the same width as the play suit's waistband would have had. I'm cutting that rectangle and using it as a template to cut an identical rectangle from the lining fabric. Which I didn't film, of course, and I was doing so well! The two layers of fabric are pinned and basted together with the right side of the strawberry fabric facing out. The other fabric doesn't matter because it won't be seen at all. I'm only using it to give more structure to the waistband. The waistband is folded in half, red sides facing each other and the two short edges are sewn with a backstitch. The waistband is turned to the right side and pressed. Then, one edge of the waistband is pinned to the garment, right sides facing each other. They are sewn together using back stitches. turning inwards the loose side of the waistband to hide all the raw edges and pressing it. Next, I'm pinning it in place. The inside of the waistband is sewn with whip stitches. Procrastinating because I dislike doing buttons and buttonholes? You, you'd be absolutely right. <laughs> okay, let's go. So, little update on the button business. I think this is the sort of situation I'm going to go for. After a ton of hesitation and a WhatsApp debate with my mom, I came to the conclusion that I liked the outside better without buttons and decided to sew some snaps instead. It was slightly less painful to do because no buttonholes, but I still hated those two hours of my life. Here's the result. If you were worried that I wasn't going to complain about my period in this video, you needn't worry anymore! Look at my face! I got a full package this month with paints of all sorts, mood swings and a ton of acne! Thank you hormones, you make my life 
so great not. Moving on, I've got all my pieces for the shorts already cut. I decided not to show any of this in video because it's literally the same thing you've seen already with the top. I'll be back with you when I start sewing. So I'm out. Bye. You never get to see this, but getting out of this seat is very ungraceful. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay, bye. For the shorts, I decided to flatline the strawberry fabric which means attaching both layers of fabric at the beginning so that they work like one. However, before I get to work on the construction of the garment per se, I want to take advantage of having a lining to create a finished edge on the fly section of the shorts. I'm doing that by sewing the strawberry fabric to the lining on the wrong side first and then turning it to the right side. This is a bit complicated because part of this side of this particular piece of fabric will have to be sewn to another piece once turned. So I'm sewing the sections that will have to be sewn again as close as possible to the edge. Hopefully all that will make sense later. This is the result once turned. And these pencil lines mark where the final seams will go. I've also decided to pad stitch the two layers together so they behave like one and don't move around while I'm working with them. Now I'm pressing the pleats into position in all four pieces. I'm also pinning the fabric to prepare it for sewing. The creased edges are sewn with a backstitch along the center line as I'm showing here. Okay, so the next step is to join the two side seams. So that goes in there, which I have already done with two of the pieces. As you can see, they have been sewn together using a backstitch. The remaining seam allowances, but only those of the lining, are trimmed to half the length. The seam is then pressed open, basted so that the longer seam allowance of the strawberry fabric hides the raw edges and sewn with whip stitches. The two side seams are now finished and I can finally attach the rest of the things together. The way this works, as far as I can tell, is that this part of the seam must be attached to the corresponding part on the back of the short to make the leg but then this part of the seam needs to be attached to the other corresponding front to make center front so that needs to go in there so that's going to be a little bit interesting <laughs> I'm not going to be filming the actual sewing process because it's the same thing I've done up until now. All seams are sewn and now I've pressed them open and prepared some of them for finishing. Okay, I'm wearing this on top of my pyjama shorts so it might not be the best fit. It is definitely too roomy so I will probably need to add a couple of pleats on the front but first I'm going to cut the waistband to see exactly how much it needs to be taken in I'm drawing a rectangle for the waistband like I did on the top Next I'm placing the strawberry fabric on top of the lining fabric and pinning them together so that I can cut them at the same time. And, you guessed it, the cutting comes next. So as I showed before, it was way too big. So what I've decided to do, which I've already done as you can hopefully see, is undo the pleats at the front. And what I'm going to do is measure how much room I have here and divide it between the two pleats and make them bigger so that it fits perfectly. I didn't film any of the undoing of the pleats because, I don't know, I was frustrated. Yay! Another pattern which was wrong, which marked the front pleats as being a lot smaller than the back pleats when the pieces were pretty much identical in size, which makes no sense whatsoever. 
I don't understand any of this. It doesn't make any sense to me. So as I mentioned yesterday, my mom convinced me to stop being a lazy ass and actually fixing the problem properly. I indeed the front pleats and I've now pinned them into the, well, what should be the right position. Yay! Which is pretty much the same size that the back pleats have. So I don't understand why the pattern tells us that the front pleats are supposed to be a lot smaller. They're not. Back to work. It's been a while, but I can finally go back to the waistband. Here I'm pinning it to the top of the shorts. And, you know, same as with the top, I'm sewing the two pieces together with a backstitch. And then finishing the other side of the waistband with whip stitches. Time for the hem. First I'm marking points 2 inches and 3 eighths away from the raw edge. Next I'm folding the fabric inward by those points and pinning it in place. Once each leg has been pinned all around, I'm basting the folded edge. And I'm also pressing it to help ease the excess fabric as much as possible. This kind of took a while. Now I'm marking 3 eighths of an inch from the raw edge. The raw edge is folded inward and basted. And finally it is sewn with whip stitches. I forgot to film, or maybe lost the footage of the closures, but this is what I ended up doing. New background today, very rural, as you can see. In case you were wondering where the heck I am, I'm in my mother's village where she grew up and where both my mom and dad were born. It's a village in the middle of nowhere, there's nothing, there are no bars, no shops, no nothing, and no public transport. You have to get here by yourself or you're not getting here. So it's tiny. During the reveal, you saw these sweets in the shape of strawberries, and also I dropped this at the end. For all of you who are not Spanish and don't know what on earth this is, this is also a sweet and this is called nata, which in English translates as cream. So you know, strawberries and cream. I thought it would be funny, especially for Spanish people that might get it. Now you know! Now you know! I hope you like the result. I really, really like it. I think it's so pretty. It's one of the prettiest things I've ever had. Of course, it could be better, but we are learning. As always, please do let me know what you thought in the comments below. I love reading your comments. It makes me so happy when I get a comment. I'm so pleased with this outfit that I feel deserves its own aesthetic. Just, just by itself. I mean, I wonder what name that aesthetic would have. Casual fairy core, vintage of leisure, Wimbledon core. Sorry if only you guys out there in the UK fully got that last one. It has so many layers. I'm going to take some high quality pictures of the outfit so you can go and check those out in my website. That's B. Go away, B. Good girl. Bye. The link to my website is below. Simply head to the projects tab. I can't English. I haven't English in a very long time. I'm doing a Norwegian course, okay? So I can Norwegian now, but I can't English. My brain doesn't have space for so many things. <laughs> Too many languages. Thank you so much for watching the video all the way to the end. I know it was long. <laughs> Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed, but think you might like this kind of content, feel free to do so in the button thingy below. Anyway, 
<laughs> Bye. Oh boy, I'm still